Lisa Van Ness here. It's time for us to start reviewing October inks. And we love Halloween, and we hope you do too. Wait, 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 wait a minute. What do you know about Halloween? <laughs> We're the Halloween experts in this place. <laughs> we'll, We're we'll taking over. Hi. <laughs> I'm Amy. I'm Davina. Davina Darling is joining us. <laughs> you normally don't see her in her beautiful self because she's behind the scenes on um, editing and doing the website. website. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, I'm happy you're here today. Yeah. I had to I had to storm in on the Halloween video. Of course. <laughs> of course. That's our favorite time of year. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we are going to talk about Halloween inks today. Yes. And we chose these based on the name of the ink, um, not so much the color of the ink. Yeah. So um, they're fun names. Mm -hmm. um, I know I like a good ink name. Yes. But then we had to figure out some way to break it down to talk to you about it. So we broke it down in color. Uh, so we're going to actually split this video into two parts. And in this first one, we're going to talk more about colors that lean more towards black, different shades of black. And then in the next video, we'll deal with some more vibrant <laughs> color choices. So part two will be published next week, right? Yeah, it'll come okay. out a week after the first video. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, All right. let's get started. Okay. So we're going to start, well, first... Let's say that we use different paper. Yes. So we each did the same ink, and I did mine on Rhodia paper, and I used Tomaway. So there's, you know, slight differences uh, in the paper you use um, with the same ink. Also, we used water, like yes. a water wash, to do our sketches. Yes. And then we used a dip pen to write. Yeah. Write the names of the inks. Okay. Okay. All right. So up first we have Diamine Shimmer Tastic Night Sky. Night Sky. <laughs> so this one, um, like you said, is a shimmer, mm -hmm. the Shimmer Tastic Diamine, um, with a silver. Yeah, it's a black ink with a silver, slightly blue. It's like a, a cool mm -hmm. blue silver shimmer. Yep. I see some blues mm -hmm. in the shimmer also. Um, and with your bat, which is really cute, um, it there's a lot of gray, mm -hmm. like with the water, it's like a yeah. uh, gray, nice, nice yeah. gray, yeah. So, this is a good shimmer one. Yeah. For Halloween. Nice Halloween sparkles. Yep. Okay. Next, we're sticking with diamine. Um, more shimmers. <laughs> yes. I love a shimmer ink. I know a lot of fountain people I, shy away from shimmers. I love them, but I don't want to clean up after them. So I really like using it with the brush and being able to just, you know, just rinse it out. Yeah. yeah. That is nice. Yeah. Although I do use shimmer inks in my fountain pens. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty good about cleaning them out. So um, I'm not scared of them. I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so diamine shimmer. Um, we've got moon dust, mm -hmm. and we've got sparkling shadow. Yes. So moon dust is another one that has some silver shimmer in it, but nice cool shimmer. But it's more of a gray. Mm -hmm. and on yours, it's really heavily saturated. But I watered mine down and was able to get a nice cool gray. But, you know, compared to that night sky that we just talked about, there is a lot more blue tone in that night sky shimmer. Yeah, than I can agree with that. the moon dust. Yeah. Mm hmm But I love the sparkling shadow, that gold shimmer. Yeah. With the black. Yeah. Blackish gray. Yeah, because when it's watered down, you get a good gray. And it's actually a good, like, there's not even really any blue undertones or anything like that. It's just really a good black mm -hmm. with gold shimmer in it. And it shimmers and shades. Yes. So that's pretty cool. And I love your shadow guy. He's a ghost. A glittery ghost. I like him a lot. He's <laughs> very cool. Alright. All right. 
So next is a blackish um, shade. Um, yeah. But truly the most Halloween name yes. of them all, I feel like. Yes. Bung Box Ink of Witch. Yes. And so we counted this as part of our black shades because when you write with it, it's just so dark. And depending on the paper that you write on, you really don't get that purple that comes through. You don't. So, you Listen. know, when I was first watching this ink, like, a year ago, I was like, well, you know, it's it's a black ink. Um, depending on what size nib you use, it doesn't really show much of the purple shade. But, man, when you get it wet. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. It kind of. Just, I love it. That purple really comes through. And on this Tome Away, where I had it most heavily saturated, I got a little bit of a sheen, which was unexpected. Mm -hmm. It's got kind of a green gold sheen going on. It's very cool on that um, Tumway River paper, yeah. for sure. I mine's not very saturated. Um, I used a lot of water with this one, um, but I love how it turned out. Yeah, super cool. Yeah. So it's a new favorite of mine. Ink <laughs> of which. All right. So next we're going to Monteverde. Yes. And we have three Monteverde blacks to talk about. So we're starting with Black Ash, which I, this one was probably my favorite of the blacks to work with the water. It, when it's diluted, it has some purples, some blues. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of different undertones that come out. I love how when you get the fountain pen inks wet, that they produce so many different shades. I don't know if that's like, I know chromatography is a word, like, but right. I don't know if that's considered what this is. I don't know. Um, um, but if anybody, you know, can tell us, yeah, leave us a chemically comment. Yeah. wise how that does that with water, like, yeah, comment, comment to us because I'd like to know. Yeah. It's really cool. But it, it does have a lot of purples and blues um, undertones to it. But when it's in the dip pen, when you're writing, it's a good, solid black. Yep. And it's a nice flowing ink. It was, it's easy to write with. I like a Monteverde ink. I think they, they handle really nicely. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's a great one. Amy drew a little black cat. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and look at your Ouija. So, for Midnight Black, I drew a portrait of my dog, who's named Ouija, like a, like a Ouija board. I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He's so cute. So, the Midnight Black Monteverde, um, again, I mean, it's a nice black, and, um, but wet. It's got a lot of purple. Yeah, I got a lot of purples, not as much blue in this one as the black ash, but a lot of purples. Yeah, sure. yeah. Black ash and midnight black. And this is on Rhodia paper. And mine's on Tome Away. Yeah, it, it's a good deep black. I didn't water mine down as much um, with the midnight black, but it's a nice cool black. They're pretty similar. I mean, wet. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they're on that paper. Similar. They look very similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, our last Monteverde is Raven Noir. Which, of course, we had to include this one. Right. Yeah. It's very Edgar Allan Poe. I want to write yeah. Edgar Allan Poe quotes with this ink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... So I attempted to do a raven <laughs> sketch. Um, it ended up like pterodactyl ra raven, but uh, anyway. He's a, he's a science experiment, or yeah. he's the raven that Edgar Allan Poe was writing oh, about. Oh yeah, maybe so, <laughs> maybe so. Um, ravens are, in all fairness, ravens are hard to draw. I, I wasn't real happy with my sketch immediately either. This is my first time to draw one. Um, so, it's good. I, it's know. good. And it works. It conveys the color really well. 
Um, yours actually has some greens. Mine has a little bit of the green that came up. But this it's very cool undertones. how it came came up with the green undertones mm -hmm. with this Raven Noir. Um, I like it a lot. Um, it's yeah. Again, Monteverde. You can't go wrong with yeah. any Monteverde. Um, but for Halloween, if you want to, yeah, Halloween yeah. ink. You know, Raven Noir is, is perfect for that. Right. Oh, <laughs> this one is of my Amy's new favorites. New favorite. I tell ya, Robert Oster. I mean, his inks are wonderful as well. And the black violet. I mean, again, yeah. when you're doing swatches um, with with just your fountain pen, um, you know, you don't you don't notice all the blue yeah. that's in the black violet. Yeah. I love I, it. I got a lot of the blues with the Tomaway. Um, the Tomaway paper, we know that it allows some of the different properties of the inks to really show through, but I was really impressed with how well it held up with me trying to drown it. <laughs> <laughs> I work, um, I was working really, really wet, heavy water use on some of these, and it held up really well, mm -hmm. and it still allowed some of the properties of the ink to show through. Mm hmm yeah, it's it's great. I mean, it it works well with mm -hmm. with really wet yeah um, applications. Yeah. So I love your cauldron too. I love it. But yeah, this is definitely one of my new favorites. Yeah, yeah, and yours shows so well all of the different veins of blue mm -hmm. that you got whenever you got it wet. Yep, I love it. It's so good. New favorite. All right. Is that all of our black that's, Halloween inks? That's it for the black Halloween inks. Um, we have so many different shades of ink that we probably missed a few. So definitely leave us some comments about, you know, good other black inks that might fall into this Halloween spooky category. Mm -hmm. I, know, <laughs> I know that there's a couple others named Raven. Yeah. Um, but... You know, we can always do this later if you guys request that. Leave us comments. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then next week we will um, do part the, two. Part two. Yeah. Part two of our Halloween named inks. Yeah. So be sure to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.